Hi, it's Matt and in this episode we are going to be looking at the Eagle Tree OSD and also enjoy just pottering around in some clouds. Now, first of all, apologies, it is getting close to bonfire night here in the United Kingdom uh, and there is a load of fireworks going on in the background. So if you hear any explosions, it's not because of my dodgy wiring. Instead, it's explosives. <laughs> right, let's get on to today's topic. Right. What I'm going to do is work my way around the screen so that you get an idea of the different things which are going on in the screen. Now you may be wondering, hmm, Matt, that's quite a lot of information on the screen. Now the thing is, in reality, you don't really, you just see straight through it. You don't even notice that it's there unless you want to go and check for something. So. Don't worry about too much about getting your screen cluttered up. Uh, that's normally never a problem because uh, you just focus on flying and just look for the key points like the RSI strength up there in the top left hand corner or maybe the current in the top right hand corner. So anyway, we're, we're, I'm getting, a set, getting ahead of ourselves. So let's start with the top left hand corner. And by the way, it's also worth noting that all of these things, you can completely rearrange the order uh, in which they appear in. So in the top left hand corner, we've got the pack voltage currently. So currently uh, the free S pack is running at 11.71 volts. We can also see the receiver voltage as well at 5.43 volts. Uh, and that's always, again, I've got the flight pack and I've got the receiver voltage just in case for whatever reason, uh, we have a brain out, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we'll be able to see on the screen. Then probably the most, well, one of the most important things up here uh, is the RSSI stri signal strength indicator. Now this flight was really just me pottering around, just ensuring that the new L9R receiver was working as expected, uh, which it was uh, for the entire flight. Did have any? Well, keep an eye on that value for the rest of this episode, and you'll see there's very little dropout. Uh, then we have course, uh, which I'm not 100% what that means. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments, but that one's gone out of my mind right now. So apologies for that one. Uh, we've got amps. So that's the current current draw uh, by the motor and all the electronics. So right now we're running on 5.9 amps. And you'll notice, there you go, I've just chucked the throttle on. How's that for timing? Uh, so I've just chucked a load of throttle on uh, and we've gone all the way up to 13, 14, 17 amps now. So it must be a full throttle moment uh, for me to go and get some height. Uh, we've then got the milliampheres rate uh, set in here which is the number of milliamps which we've been and used. And there was a bit of a blackout and you'll see me, I've just turned it around and it's come back, happy days. So currently out of a 5,000 pack, uh, I've been in draw, drew out of that pack, uh, 1,240 milliampheres approximately. Also this gauge on the right hand side is just a nice little visual indicator uh, of the amount of battery which I've got left. And you can either change that in the desktop software for the Eagle Tree Vector, or you can do it via the uh, little, just double click the uh, flight mode button and you can change the battery uh, pack size uh, using the on-screen menu, which is a topic for a different day. Then on the left hand side, we've got our flight timer up there as well and also our current mode. So you'll, the, you'll now see that I'm in 2D hold. In other words, uh, fly straight and gives us um, some stabilization uh, and then hold the direction in which we're flying. So it requires no input from myself or no input from yourself. The model will continue to fly at the same altitude and in a straight line as well. You may also see me swap that back to manual, uh, return to launch uh, and other modes as I'm chatting through uh, this episode. Then on the left hand side, we have our airspeed. Now actually, technically it's ground speed because I don't, well I didn't at that point in time have the pilot sensor, which you can hear a little rustle on my desk. I've had two pilot tubes turned up uh, so that I will have an airspeed on here uh, and then the ground speed down here uh, so that I, I know the true speed of the model in the air, just in case I don't stall it or do something silly, which you'd have to do a really hard, do a really good job in trying to stall a Phantom. Uh, they're just big and floaty models. Uh, 
Moving on to the right hand side, which unfortunately is blurred out because uh, one or two times I do nip above uh, the threshold and I don't want any um, annoying comments in the comment section saying, Oh Matt, you went to 123 meters high. Yeah, I probably noticed because it does flash down the bottom in green uh, when I've gone over the 400 foot notice. And that's the nice thing about the vector. You can set alarms. Uh, you'll see like the battery voltage indicator in the top left hand corner is blinking green at the moment, uh, which tells me that I should be slightly concerned about it. Uh, and if it goes orange or red, then I should be really concerned about it. So yeah, we can see our height in a scale on the right hand side, which I can see on my screen, but it's blurred out for you. Then coming across to the middle, you've got multiple different uh, options for the uh, axes in the middle. I really like this one, but do note mine's not calibrated properly, so that horizontal bar should really be here in the middle. It's so simple to do using the on-screen menu. I will do that the next time I take her out. You'll notice that I've got the aeroplane in the middle. Uh, that is in relation to the little arrow which is down here. I haven't changed mine, to put, I need to put mine so I've got a little home symbol on here so that I know which way the aircraft is pointing to the home, uh, home icon. And of course the home icon just moves around in the screen depending on how close or how far I am away from home. Moving down, uh, this section here we have the compass uh, so that you'll see that I'm flying north, north, uh, north east at the moment. Uh, that's really handy because if you know that you're flying out north, uh, you know to come back and fly south. May sound daft, but just one of these little things for you to keep an eye on uh, when you go off on a little journey. Now over here on the left and on the right, which is blurred out, is actually the GPS locations. And yeah, there's a bit of interference here. Uh, it's just the way it is. And again, if you get interference when you're flying, uh, just generally just fly through it. It's not the end of the world. Then in the bottom left hand corner, we've got the number of satellites. Now you'll notice that I've got 21 satellites and that's because the Eagle Tree Vector uses the uh, oh, U-Blocks and the, is it the Geo NAS, whatever it was, the Russian satellites as well. So that's why I've got such a high satellite count down there. That's what you should be expecting in your goggles too. Next up for the G, that's the ground height, uh, which is basically the same. So that's the one from the GPS. Then the other height which you've got in there comes from the barometer. I can't remember what the G means down here, if I'm frankly honest. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you have the total distance made. So right now we're on uh, one point, uh, sorry, 8.8 .8 kilometers. And the last value down here in the bottom right corner, which is probably blurred out for you, uh, but that little uh, uh, two little arrows uh, they're pointing backwards and forwards uh, and that is the distance uh, back to home again now there are many many other options which you can have on your eagle tree vector to appear in the in the osd if you don't want the course heading uh, if you don't want the receiver voltage or you want your amps on the left or the rssr on the right uh, you can can easily just configure these you just drag and drop them uh, around the interface and it's that simple uh, so yeah yeah, Eagle Tree Vector. Some people may sniff that it's really expensive, and granted, it is. But on the flip side, for an all in one package, it is very, very simple to set up. And if you can manage drag and drop and clicking a couple of buttons, uh, it is very straightforward to set up. Oh, and also remember that you can configure. And they really are blowing up stuff fireworks here in the background. Apologies for that. Uh, they're obviously having a good party down the bottom. No, sorry. Um, the thing to note is all these different options are completely configurable and you can drag and drop them around your screen. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up now. Enjoy the rest of the flight. You'll see there's some very, very low flying cloud, uh, very low lying clouds there. Uh, and yeah, what a fantastic day. So with that said, for myself, Matt, I sincerely hope that you found this episode interesting. Um, like I said, there, there's a million different options for the Eagle Tree Vector. Uh, just go with simple to begin with uh, and I'll carry on uh, I need to get the episodes uh, rendered up so which will show you how to set these up and get a screen which looks very similar to this one I really like this one uh, because all the key details all I need to do is just look up if that makes sense I've got the battery pack voltage I've got the RSSI strength I've got the current current com consumption, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, and I've also got the total milliamp for you used. Uh, I just got to look up left 
I look up right and I've got the key details which I need uh, to aid me with the flight. So as I was saying, for myself, Matt, they really are blowing up stuff here. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm off now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the flight. So for myself, Matt, cheerios. <laughs>